The other thing that is really noteworthy about her in the short time she was with us, when she wrote to us about coming here to Princeton, she said three things in her uh, personal statement that you all wrote. You, you all wrote. One, I want to be happy. Two, I want to make a difference. And three, I want to make my parents proud. So I, I want to propose in that spirit, a toast tonight, to celebrate Jessica, her life, her energy, her spirit. And so that toast is, be happy, make a difference, and make somebody proud. Cheer. Cheer. Thank you, Dr. Gross. With that, we're going to invite Dr. Sorensen to the stage, and I, I hear he has a few words for us. So we'll see what he has to say. Uh, first, uh, thank you, Jay. Um, tonight, we are going to celebrate Jess Jessica's memory and her contributions uh, and her achievements. Um, I'm, I'm standing before you as a member of the faculty of this department and I'm, I'm, I was invited to come and speak on behalf of my colleagues in chemistry here. And I want to say, I, I say on behalf of all of us who teach at Princeton how, how um, privileged we are to work with um, all of you students who are at the height of your powers in terms of your creativity it's a it's a great pri privilege to work with all of you and we all uh, we all feel that way and I wanted to start by saying that um, I also want to express on my on behalf of my colleagues um, our collective gratitude for the third year class and we are extremely excited to um, to uh, we will soon witness the collective creativity of the third year <laughs> class uh, we have this great tradition with the skit, and we are really looking forward to that. And um, and we want all of you guys to have fun. And we we value um, what you bring to all of our labs so much more than more than I can say, more than we can say. So we want everyone here to have fun tonight, and uh, we are we are just really looking forward to this skit. So let's see the collective creativity of the third year class. <laughs> and therefore, without any further ado, I think there are some professors, professors standing behind the screen, ready, ready to entertain you tonight. So please enjoy. All right, I'm back. Great. Well, welcome to Frickmas 2012. Um, brought to you by D'Angelo's Italian Market. Are you all enjoying Frickmas this year? I said, are you all enjoying Frickmas this year? Well, that's actually too bad because we were told that Princeton overbooked the atrium, and we're all going to have to leave for the 191st annual conference on medieval bookbinding. <laughs> which will itself have to make way in an hour for the bi-weekly meeting of the Alumni Donors Association. So the skits will actually be held in Conference Room 324. Shut up! In Conference Just Room 324. Just shut up, Andy, okay? God! <laughs> Welcome to Frickmas 2012. Our first skit is starring Ebenezer Doyle. <laughs> Startup grants running out. 
She told facilities to take all of the money out of our heating bill and apply it directly to our NMR accounts. Pretty soon we'll have to combust everything by combustion analysis. Yeah, but don't you go combusting anything, especially since your accident. Hey, did you guys see Evan Israel's latest email? No. Let's see. Hi, oh, I will be going on a short vacation to Tahiti next week. Don't worry, I'll be in email contact and I'm getting back on December 26th. See you then. <laughs> Does that mean what I think it means? That's right. Until we get a science paper, there'll be no more vacations. <laughs> I'm up for tenure and I need an edge over the competition. <laughs> But I already bought my tickets, and Kevin already left. His vacation will be of the permanent variety. <laughs> Wait, which Kevin? All of them. <laughs> and I don't want to see any more iPads in lab. I know you only use them to play Angry Birds. Get, <laughs> Get back to work. <laughs> I swear they get so lazy around Frickin's time. I might as well get back to work because they're clearly not doing it. <laughs> What's that noise? Happening is a doyle. <laughs> Sally, is that you? Why are you I'm, I am not the Sally that you speak of, but the ghost of Frickin's past. Come to teach you the true meaning of Frickin's. <laughs> Charles Dickens? And if this is supposed to be, shouldn't the first ghost be a former colleague? Silence! <laughs> well, of course we thought of that, my dear. But Chilbon was saying, unavailable. So instead, you have me. Tonight you will be visited by three spirits. The spirits of Frickmas past, present, and future. We will show you the true meaning of Frickmas. Come with me. Well, I suppose I've been working for 14 straight hours and could use a short break. <laughs> Here we are, the year is 1972. Before your time, but while I was in my prime. <laughs> We are standing here in Old Frick at the first Frickmas celebration. Frick? Why are we wasting time in Frick? The heck reaction is being discovered as we speak. You're missing the point. You see all these happy students? Last week they rioted and attempted to burn down the building. Frickmas <laughs> is a safety valve for them to get all their anger and frustration in a, out in a safe and creative way. So the meaning of Frickmas is that graduate students are violent and lazy? <laughs> I'm getting nowhere here. Maybe the ghost of Frickmas present will be able to show you the true meaning. I only hope that he's on time. You professor types are like herding cats. Oh, hi, Ebenezer. Hey, come hey. over here. I've got something to show you. <laughs> it's the crew team. <laughs> yeah, these are three of my former students. They're going to go to the Olympics. How about that, huh? That's very interesting, Eric. Uh, are you supposed to tell me something about Frickness? You're right. All right, let's take you to the lab at the present time. <laughs> Oh good, they're all working. <laughs> Is he eating uncooked ramen? That's disgusting. <laughs> Dennis, vent the funnel. <laughs> he doesn't have any time anymore to get to the microwave. He's got to get that science paper out. I didn't mean for them to starve. Tell me, will they survive? Well, that depends on how much food they can scrunch up during Frickmas. It's going to be really difficult with those crutches. 
But hopefully, the person who knows the true meaning of Frickmas will provide for him. The true meaning of Frickmas? The true meaning of Frickmas is... Oh, snap! I have to go write some recommendation letters. Just, <laughs> just wait right here, and Ghost of Frickmas Future will be here shortly. <laughs> <laughs> it has my name, Professor Emeritus. But well, what does it mean? Do I have to spell it out for you? This is the future, you're retired, and that's the end. Look at me. I got tenure and a reagent named after me, and now I just take it easy. People love me so much, I can insult them whenever I want, and they think I'm just being friendly. Like this. You were born here in New Jersey, is that correct? Yes. Well, you have my deepest sympathy. <laughs> See? Wasn't that fun? <laughs> so what you're saying is that I get tenure, I got science people, and that everything's going to be fine. No, what I'm saying is let it go. Chemistry has gone to hell in a handbasket anyway. And why on earth do you want a science paper? Guess who has the biggest fraud and retraction rate of all the journals? It has such high impact. Impact, schmimpact. There's nothing new under the sun. Get it? Got it? Good. Bye now. Wait, you're supposed to tell me the true meaning of Frickmas. Frickmas? I believe you mean Fricknica. And the meaning is... There is no meaning. It's like the bard said. Tis a tale told by an idiot. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some serious puttering around to do. <laughs> wow, that was awesome. Clap. The true meaning of Frickmas. Is it about breaks for graduate students, free food, the futility of life, or spending $20,000 on a party? I think I can address all three in just in time for Frickmas. Hey, Pete's back up. Did Alice intervene? No. But there has been an intervention. First, if Christmas is a break for graduate students, I'd like to tell you that I'm extending my vacation to the Pacific for, by an additional week. I'll be going to the Galapagos. You may also take a week off, but knowing you, it'll be as exotic as the Delaware water gas. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are very welcome. And secondly, if Christmas is about free food, I'll be giving you some snacks that I eat whenever I need a serious recharge. Some baby carrots, some frozen peas, and some frozen corn. <laughs> You're also very welcome. And finally, if Christmas is about the futility of life, I can't think of anything more useless than an iPad. So I didn't get you one. Oh, no. oh I'm just kidding. iPads for the whole lab. May Jobs bless us, everyone. I've been instructed to read a special disclaimer for this next skit. No Cheerix students participated in the planning or writing of this skit. Uh, in fact, I've received similar instructions from the groups of Renasik, Bokarsley, Carr, Carey, Kava, Chan, Doyle, Fiedler, Groves, Heck, Knowles, McMillan, Rabinowitz, Rabbit, Schwartz, Saloni, Sorensen, Tupato, and Yang. I'm sure if Tom Weir actually had any grad students, they would want exactly the same thing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Cheerix applause. Oh, oh, how did I pull the short straw at the faculty meeting? <laughs> uh, all right, who wants to come up here and tell me what they want for Christmas? Come on, guys, we don't have all day. You, you, what do you want? <laughs> whoa, 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 what do I look like, a massage chair? Just, just, just stand there, okay? What do you want? Well, it's pretty simple, really. I just want a job. Okay, what are your qualifications? I'm proficient in NMR, IR, mass spec, uh, Moss Bauer, Squid, XPS, and X-ray crystallography. Oh, sounds like you'd be a perfect uh, postdoc. Send me your resume. I'm already a postdoc. I'm in the Yang group. 
Oh, then the HMR stuff's already taken care of. Get back to me in like two or three years. Next. Hey, Paul. Hello, Dorothea. You know, I really could use a solvent system. My graduate students have to go bug everyone on the first floor every time they need solvents. I don't know. A solvent system's pretty expensive. I just don't think it's in the cards this year. What about a coupon board? Um, Come on, Paul. Look. You're being so cheap. It's, it's not that I'm cheap, I just have a budget to consider. Okay, why don't you give me something with plenty to spare? Ooh, good idea. Today. Here you go. What's this? Jack's papers. <laughs> Next. Hey, Paul? 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 Hey, we're running low on some solvent again. Can I have to go ahead to order some more? Again? You guys go through so much solvent, more than any other students I've ever seen. Tell you what, you name a solvent, and I'll tell you whether you should make it or buy it. <laughs> um, hexanes. Ooh, perfect. Here you go. A candle? Feed stuff. Get cracking. The holiday spirit. What was that? What a wonderful education I'm getting, Paul. Damn straight. <laughs> Next. I like to take Saturdays off. No. <laughs> Could I spend less time in the glove box? No. <laughs> Could I have a puppy? No. <laughs> Could I at least have a Christmas sketch about puppies? Ne hmm. That I think we can arrange. So, uh, what are you going to do to celebrate? Go to Paris? Atlantic City? London? Uh, I think I'm going to be a little adventurous. Hogwarts. I know. Base jumping. Are you going to row? You should row. You'd be a great rower. Um, actually, I'm getting a dog. This one told me about this great shelter that perfectly matches pets to your personality. You know, that sounds really interesting. And I would like to play fetch more often. My grad students don't seem to enjoy it. Oh, no, they don't. Well, let's get going then. Jeff, are you coming too? Well, I guess I could celebrate Romney losing and all. <laughs> Welcome, how can I help you? Hi, we're looking to get some pets and we heard you could perfectly match them to our personalities. Oh, toads. <laughs> We'd love to help some of these animals find a home. But I must warn you, these animals will be perfectly matched to their personalities, for better or worse. <laughs> now, um, animals require a lot of care. Do you have time for them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're professors. What do you think we do? Oh, so, plenty of time. <laughs> so what pets can we look at then? Well, for you, I think this dog might be taken care of. This one's a very noble animal, a pure breed. It's very nice, and everyone seems to get along with it. But one caveat it comes with a Polish hound, it's a bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> Sounds perfect. How about you? Would you like a dog? Yeah, that would be great. Hmm. For you, I think this dog might be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very fun dog, a great problem solver, but it's a tad excitable. <laughs> wow, what's this little guy's name? His caller when we found him said his name was Clayson. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Eh, it's a lame reaction. You know, I fired that guy. No, no, no! The Clazer reaction is high drama from nature. He's perfect, I'll take him. You should know, he really loves this ball. What's that you got there? Oh, just a regular tennis ball, nothing really. <laughs> So, uh, you got a dog for me? For you, I don't, I'm not too sure because I don't know you that well, but I think this dog may be perfect. It's a real hero from Sandy. Ah, I do love heroes and saving lives. Sort of my thing. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. It just seems to be missing something, you know? Pizzazz. Well, okay, well, there's another dog that has a bit of a better history. 
He's perfect. Perfect. Come here. Hey, I, uh, I saw a Scottish Terrier around. Can I have that one? Oh, this guy? Oh, no, you don't want him. Um, we're just waiting for the owner to pick him up. It's actually a very irritable dog, too. Uh, it, re it refuses to eat any food that is more than two pellets. And it needs its water to be flown in from overseas and be very, very expensive. Oh, it sounds like an incredible pain. Yeah, it's moved around two or to two, from two or three shelters already. That sounds terrible. Do you have a dog for me? Uh, well, not a dog per se, but I think this animal might be perfect. <laughs> perfect. That's it then. Everyone has found a pet, but there will never be one for me. Well, we could find a dog back here. Oh, I don't know. He'll want to go out for walks, and in this weather too. It'll just be murder on my back. You know, I thought this when I first saw you. You do seem more like a cat person. <laughs> I guess it will do. You're welcome. This is perfect. All of us. We've all found pets. Abby, what are you going to name your dog? Uh, I think I'm going to name him Tenure. <laughs> uh, actually, your dog already has a name. It's Arizona Steve. <laughs> no! <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a special Frickmas edition of the Weekend Update. Our top story. <coughs> our top story. There we go. Thank you. Um, on Monday, Chemistry Department Chair David McMillan briefly stepped off out of his office, and during this time, a few of his students went exploring and discovered a Celtic United jersey hidden underneath one of the couch cushions. <laughs> a subsequent investigation into Professor McMillan's lineage discovered that he is in fact secretly Irish. <laughs> Noted chemical biologist Tom Muir, who had recently just moved his research group to Princeton, returned to Rockefeller on Thursday saying that he had been recruited under false pretenses. <laughs> Moving on to another story about lineages, it was discovered on Monday that Princeton assistant chemistry professor Robert Knowles is actually the son of former House Speaker and Republican presidential candidate Newt Gingrich. And, however, it is unclear which of Newt's former or current wives or mistresses is the mother. Professor Knowles dis uh, resigned in disgrace on Wednesday and has scheduled an appearance on Jerry Springer to determine the identity of his mother. A new musical has been causing quite a stir on Broadway. The Fiedler on the Roof has been sold out since its debut two weeks ago. And here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to promote this show, I give you The Fiedler on the Roof. Okay, that's enough of that. In recent weeks, Princeton University uh, chemistry professor Herschel Rabbits has broken with this custom and allowed a couple of his graduate students to graduate in under 10 years. <laughs> As a result of this, these students were left with some remaining mental energy, and as a result, all of the world's financial crises have been solved. All of them. US, Greece, Ireland, all of them. <laughs> well, I'm now being told that in order to get permission from his bosses to come visit Princeton, Frickness this year is being held in honor of Mike Rabinowitz. I'm also told that upon his arrival at the department, the department chair, David McMillan, could not find a parking spot and called Princeton Transportation and Parking, who figures they can issue some 100 rather arbitrary parking tickets. <laughs> Excited agents have descended upon the scene and are scour scouring all nearby parking lots for improperly displayed parking tags and other unfortunate victims that they can claim parked on invisible sidewalks. <laughs> That's too bad for that, those folks, Eric, but if you want to park at Princeton, this can only be expected. Anyway, finally, as a result of Hurricane Sandy, Governor Chris Christie has imposed a beer rationing throughout the state of New Jersey. 
This has forced Princeton University students to procure their beer from other sources. Here at the chemistry department social, they have raided Professor Robert Cava's personal microbrewery. Er, wait, hold on. Sorry, it says nanobrewery. Anyway, let's have a look. <laughs> Another social on the third floor? It's always like they're moving them and canceling them for all these events in the atrium, and we're never invited. Yeah. Hey, what's this? Solid State Imperial Stout. Huh. <laughs> I've never heard of it. What? What is this? Oh, holy cow! It's... it's it tastes like knowledge. <laughs> like all my hopes and dreams. What? <laughs> like what I can actually this? taste my PhD. What? <laughs> hey, 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 what's up? Whoa. So strong. So bright. I can see the light. It's guys, there. Guys, are you all right? It's there. Ah. Uh -huh. yeah. Have you ever really looked at your hands? <laughs> no. They're called fingers, but I've never seen them fing. What is going on here? They got into your beer. Lightweights. Uh oh, only people with real jobs can drink that brew without suffering some pretty permanent side effects. Huh. I guess I'll have to transfer it to Colorado or to Washington now. This... No! I can't finish your projects, too! This, this is awful. What am I gonna do? Listen, Rob. Uh, I don't see what the big deal is. They're just grad students. In this economy, they're a dime a dozen. They have no better alternatives. Yeah, you still have a huge research group and don't have to worry about getting tenure. My entire group just left. What am I gonna do? Listen, Rob, if you want to earn tenure, you're going to have to learn to take little obstacles like this in strike. I see this as an opportunity. An opportunity for my serendipity. You mean that little gizmo for high throughput Bruce Forrest blah blah blah? Oh, come on, Bob. It wasn't a little, it was expensive. Anyway, with a few tweaks, I think my, grad, my uh, instrument will be, could be used to synthesize new grad students. Perfect grad students. <laughs> a few tweaks? Yeah, dream on. Don't worry about a thing, guys. Honestly, the remaining half of my group will take care of it. Based on previous experience, I know they will. <laughs> and so, after many sleepless nights and busy days, accelerated serendipity became accelerated evolution. There were a few kinks on the way, however. Dave, Dave, it's been a horrible problem. <laughs> a problem? What is it? Is everything all right? There's something wrong with the machine. It's not broken, uh, but Dorothea heard about it, and she, you know how excitable she is, she had to go check it out. And she brought Abby with her, and they, they fell in. They fell in? Yeah, Kava tried to save him with the samurai sword, but he couldn't do anything. <laughs> What are you looking at? <laughs> oh, Abby and Dorothea fused into one graduate student. Oh, the humanity of their poor research groups. Their projects couldn't be more incompatible. Dave! Dave! Fluoride is a great phosphatase inhibitor. It's gonna be fun. I'm not sure that's how it works. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> Swedish fish vodka. Didn't I throw this stuff out? I don't know why you throw stuff like this out. Stuff is terrible. Do you always just go after abandoned half-full bottles of liquor? Yes. Don't leave. It's still out. Uh, huh. I guess we'll have to fuse Jakob and Stefan now, too. <laughs> well, maybe not. But soon the kinks were, were worked out, and the manufactured graduate students were produced. Naturally, word spread to other departments, and 
Macmillan was hailed as a modern Prometheus. So, let me get this straight. You have a machine that can be made to synthesize any graduate student with any quality or behavior that one desires. Exactly. And can you even begin to understand what this means? No more recruiting. No more laziness. They don't have families, so they don't need vacations. Isn't it wild? <laughs> All right, I'm sold. Show me what you've got. All right, bring them out. <laughs> this here is our very first model. He has no face, no identity, no personality. All he knows is his viewhood and the work that he does there. My research is his whole life. He does exactly what you tell him to do, without rolling his eyes or without any sarcastic backtalk under his breath whatsoever. <laughs> Sounds like a very reasonable model. I'm sure he's quite productive. Yes, he's perfectly productive. All right, you, back to your film hood. <laughs> I must say, though, Dave, having no personality makes him a little eerie. Yeah, I'm glad you bring that point up. We thought so too at first, and now I can assure you that all of our recent models uh, display a whole host of vibrant personalities <laughs> that we designed for them. For our second model, well, why don't we just show you rather than tell? Rob, bring out the junior faculty model. Yes, sir, I will, sir, right away, sir. <laughs> no, no, let go of me! No, no, no it's okay. Me. You're doing your job. I'm your boss. It's okay. I don't even hear you even feel my <laughs> What was his problem? He, he doesn't seem good at all. He was disobedient, even hostile. Yeah, well, at first glance, it might seem that way, but we actually designed him like that. You see, he is severely afraid of me not getting tenure. In fact, he's more afraid of it than I am. Oh, I get it. That's perfect for junior faculty. Exactly. Now you've got it. And I've got loads more to show you, too. All right, come on out, gentlemen. Let me guess. This one has indestructible feet, so he doesn't need shoes in the lab? No, no. He's a theoretical chemist, but he can type with his toes as well as his fingers, which we found increases output exponentially. And this one doesn't require food or water. He runs solely on alcohol. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. I don't really see how that's a good thing. That's funny. I thought he'd be way more popular. All right, get back to work, guys. As time went on, the manufactured graduate students proved to be a massive financial and popular success. Macmillan became a household name across the country. But then, one fateful day, the president of the university called. Professor Macmillan, I presume? Well, I'm here to congratulate, congratulate you on all of your success with this program and to let you know that your retirement is well earned. <laughs> retirement? What? Who knew this tips on the board out of sense of humor? Well, I, I've got so much left to do, so much serendipity to serendip. <laughs> Dave, to be quite honest with you, we found someone more capable than you, and they need the lab space. Ah, more capable than me. Impossible. <laughs> what? This guy? <laughs> In my office, too? What? what an outrage. Dave, you see, he doesn't fight with me or the board or demand endless money for trips to Elements, and department screenings of Scottish Disney movies or various other events all year. And besides, there's so much less drama. No! See, this is exactly what I mean. You're fired, Dave. <laughs> oh, it was just a bad dream. What a relief. Ah, well, accelerated evolution. Maybe I should have Stefan look into that. Last night. <laughs> what are we going to do after Accelerate Evolution? I think it's going to work out fine. Wait, wait, wait. I still think it should be E.J. Corey instead of Whitesides in that skit. Suicide jokes are always funny. Oh, Get out. Whoa. Go. <laughs> Seriously, what are we going to do after Accelerate Evolution? Jen, 
I still think we can do two girls, one hood. <laughs> Why do you bring that up every single meeting? A, it's gross, and B, I'm the only girl. Wait, wait, guys, I've got it. Moby Frick, search for a white postdoc. No, we can't do that either. We can't do any of these two, skits. Two guys, one hood. Two grads, one hood. Whoa. Two profs, one hood. We're not doing any of these skits. Let's just get Jeff Schwartz back out here to decide for us. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jeopardy. <laughs> Today's contestants are, from Connecticut, a pioneer in the field of bioorganic chemistry, Jay Groves. Next up, from somewhere in Vermont, mustachio lifesaver, Paul Ryder. And finally, our chairman, whose 14 year cash earnings total greater than 14 million, David McMillan. And here is the host of Jeopardy, Jeffrey Schwartz. Great, yeah, it's great to see you too. Woohoo, we're so excited. <laughs> all right, we all know the rules, let's just do the damn thing. I guess we should figure out what the categories are. They are modern medicinal chemistry, the pen is mightier, pot potables, electron transfer, and finally, bon appetit. David, as our chairman, I've been instructed to let you go first. The game is afoot. I'll take potent potables for 1,000. This wine, named after an animal local to the vineyard, is considered to have a high quality to value ratio. In other words, it's fairly cheap. Beep beep. That's wild. My favorite kind of wine is named after an animal, and I think it's pretty cheap, too. It's only a couple thousand a bottle. What's screaming the eagle? I'm so sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> sorry, Dave. Who is screaming the eagle? No! <laughs> What is Yellowtail? Obviously. It was just describing a kangaroo with yellow hindquarters. Really, that's been known for 50 years. I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> Jay, it's your selection. I'll take the one about electrons for six. Electron transfer for 600. A special reminder of 20 first years in the audience tonight. I don't want to see any arrows. All right, now the answer. <laughs> This class of enzymes primarily uses a porphyrin ligated iron septum to selectively oxidize CH bonds, a key process in metabolism. <laughs> Jeff, 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 Jeff. <laughs> Can I just take this opportunity to tell this lovely audience out here how important metabolism is when you're designing life-saving drugs like Crixivan? You know, it's all about saving lives. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Paul, but that is, that is not even a response. <laughs> I'll take this one, Jeff. After all, enzymes are nothing but large and inefficient organocatalysts. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, catalysis involves a complex interplay between kinetics and thermodynamics, and really the curtain hammock situation is incredibly important to consider here. So we can really just start and by discussing... And time is up. Jay, you're the only one remaining. Jay, just use the buzzer already. <laughs> Uh, what is Cytochrome P450? Well, of course. You know, these questions seem too difficult for some of our contestants. I can't say I'm surprised. Jay, back to you. I think I'll stay in that category for a thousand. You know what? Let's make things a little simpler for our other contestants, shall we? This next one will just be a question, and it'll only have a yes or no answer, all right? Just, just yes or no. Here it is. Is solvent important in electron transfer mechanisms? And Jeff. Come on, it's all about saving lives here. Who cares about mechanism, am I right? Am I right? Come on, yeah! Three years to retirement, three years to retirement. You can retire now if you want to, Jeff. Oh, you're just too funny, David. Would you care to improve upon your drinking buddy's answer? All right, well, you see, Jeff, the electron's really just like a football, and it's moving between the quarterback and the wide receiver. And the correct choice of solvent is like choosing a clean, clear day on which to play. And the wrong choice of solvent is like trying to play football in Hurricane Sandy. While I prefer political metaphors to sports <laughs> metaphors, it pains me to admit that your answer is technically correct. Viz, that solvent makes a difference. 
The next choice of category is up to you. Actually, Jeff, I think I'd much rather just go to Final Jeopardy right now. The category is going to be important organic chemists. <laughs> Last time I checked, I got to decide the categories and when we went to Final Jeopardy. Well, you checked too long ago, Jeff. Fine. This man is the most cited and best looking organic chemist in the world. <laughs> Whatever, just write down your responses. <laughs> All right, we'll start with you, Paul, since you had the least money. You wrote. Turd Ferguson. <laughs> what a surprise! You know, Jeff, um, it's funny, because you know why? It's uh, different than a uh, normal name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you wagered negative two billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, negative two billion. It's kind of funny, you know why? Uh, because I got it wrong, now you have to pay me two billion dollars. <laughs> How's that for some uh, creative consulting, you know? Moving on. David, you... You didn't write anything! Ha! Huh. There's no need, no need to even consider it, Jeff. It's self-evident. Well, we still have to count that wrong, and you wagered... Jeff Schwartz's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, hilarious. Let's just get this over with. Jay, you wrote... Jay, you wrote... Ha! Ben List. Ben List? This is an outrage. I'm much taller than Ben List. <laughs> Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. As such, I award the correct answer to Jay. Oh, and he wagered everything. That makes him the winner of this year's Jeopardy. Jeff, do we have to go through this every time? The winner of Jeopardy is decided by the department chair. As such, I award myself the winner, and I award myself all of the cash. Thanks for doing so well, Jay. I haven't won that much in a while. That might even cover this year's frickness. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Why can't I just go emeritus in peace? Well, honestly, Jeff, I just like humiliating people. That reminds me, I've got to get to someone's general's exam. Hey, how was your vacation? Eh, it was pretty good, you know? I got so many emails to go through, however. Oh, thanks. Ugh. Hey, did you ever see that email from uh, Jeanette Carey? December 2nd. I need to borrow some Sudafed. I've got a cold. Huh. That's strange. Oh, you missed some uh, exciting news while you were uh, gone. You know uh, Professor Rabinowitz? Oh yeah, what's up? Uh, his hair seceded, started its own research group, and then scooped him. No way! Yeah! Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. I just got another email from Carrie. I need to borrow some methylamine and iodine. Hmm. Oh, hey, here's one more. December 6th. I need to borrow a speedboat. If, if you can't get it to me by the end of the day, don't worry about it? What do you think that means? Well, I think it means that uh, you need to brush up in your orgo. And anyway, that sort of reminds me of uh, Torquato. Why? Well, you know, he used to be a cop. <laughs> a dirty cop. It's hard to see. Yeah, I know. But uh, he figured out the best structure to densely pack drugs and was making a killing on the side. The authorities found out, he shaved his mustache and came to Princeton. Who knew? Hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, dude, I gotta go teach. Hope you have a nice day. All right, see ya. I'm gonna get back to work. Has anyone seen Steve? The algae growing in the chilled water systems become sentient. Hey, you're not wearing your lab coat. Hey, we have a new safety policy in this department. 
You need to be wearing your lab coat at all times. This is your first strike. Well, I'm not even using chemicals. What's the worst thing gonna happen? I'm gonna spill vacuum on myself? You need to wear your lab coat at all times when you are in lab. Hey, uh, how's the instrument doing? Uh, pretty good. I just uh, got an XPS spectra of that sample that you uh, told me to analyze. Steve, I was just telling this graduate student that he needs to be wearing his lab coat at all times while he's in lab. As the PI, you need to enforce this. In fact, you should be wearing your lab coat right now, too. This is your first strike. I don't need to be wearing a lab coat. I'm tenured faculty. I can do whatever I want. No, you are not exempt. Everyone needs to be wearing their lab coat while they are in lab. Oh, boy, free food. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll give myself a strike, but only because I want to. Now, where is your lab coat? I don't need to be wearing a lab coat. I'm just in the lab, not working. Well, so is I, and I got a strike, so now you have one, too. <sighs> Steve. Hey. Yep. Yeah, things are going pretty well. The Cabo lab got all the good food, but... Yeah, they always get it first. Oh, uh, excuse me. You were in lab without your lab coat on. This is your second strike. One more strike and you are kicked out of this department for life. I have to put on my lab coat just to walk through lab? Yes, to get you to have my to desk? wear your lab coat at all times when you are in lab. Fine, fine. You think I killed somebody or okay. something? Okay, just wear your lab coat. So, uh, you finally get... An XPS of that sample you're talking about? Uh, yeah. Actually, the uh, algae in the chilled water had some great ideas about fitting the spectra. <laughs> really? Show me. Uh, yeah. The data's just... 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 right over there. <laughs> Almost reach it. Steve? The algae in the chilled water system is really beginning to insult the Kava lab. Do we have any money in the budget for the exterminator? Hey! You are in lab coat! You are, <laughs> you are in the lab without your lab coat on. No, I'm not. See? The half of me that's in lab is wearing lab coat. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations! You are officially in the lab without your lab coat on. This is your third strike. You are kicked out for life. This, Whoa, this is ridiculous. Algae Who just am I getting the fix it? You were not this is right, this is how we... Oh, I bet they don't do this at Harvard. <laughs> and that's how, sooner or later, the entire chemistry department got kicked out for life. Let's see how it all turned out. Well, I finally got rid of all your petty bickering and got a job at Google, where they respect authority and know that safety comes first. I run a delivery company so I can fly my plane full time. I call it XPS for expensive postal service. And I transferred to molecular biology, where I found better pay, better job prospects, and women. <laughs> and in fact, I go on to win a Nobel Prize in, ironically, chemistry. Thanks, Three Strikes. You saved my career. Thanks, Three Thanks, Strikes. Three strikes. <laughs> And that's why your hard work will propel Princeton chemistry to number one in the world. And maybe even the galaxy. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, uh, five years is a long time to get my degree. How am I supposed to stay interested for so long? <laughs> Fear and intimidation. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let me tell you about my process. Hit it, Tom. When I wake up, I think of serendipity, I think of all that's waiting out there to be found. When I go out to work on chemistry, oh, I know it's gonna make me so renowned. When I write grants, well, you know I'm gonna swim, I'm gonna swim in all the cash they give to me. And when I publish, don't you know I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win in all the awards that will ever be. But I would run 500 screens and I would run 500 more Just to be the man who writes a thousand papers that they're begging for 
But I would run 500 screens and I would run 500 more just to be the man who writes a thousand papers that they're begging for. So that's basically how I do it. Any more questions? Oh. Yes! The chemistry department has a great deal of musical talent available for the very first time on one excellent volume. It will be available for the modest price of $215. All of the proceeds go to some very powerful politician from Illinois. <laughs> The wait is over. Now, that's what I call Frickmas 2012 has arrived. Featuring all the greatest hits from the chemistry department, all in one new collection. Used to be without calamity. This green energy, it lacks efficiency. Now we stand around. Yeah. 
$250 for this amazing CD, but tonight only, you can have it for the low, low price of just sitting back and enjoying the following music video. <laughs> Pop it Princeton style! Princeton style! Princeton's a place where half the people call New Yorkers. They drink their fancy coffee and pay rent rates like New Yorkers. But they do not have eating clubs or bed spoon in New York. So what you think of that, New Yorkers? Got no safety here. Got emails talking about the rabbit raccoons hanging here. No more can you leave the car keys in the ignition here. What is it coming to? And yet the tourists still come here. They want their kids here. snippets of some songs and we hope you enjoyed them and uh, those are actually full-length songs that we all have we had a lot of talent in the department and we made real CDs full albums and we have them for free for you tonight and they're in these two baskets so uh, we're gonna leave them here and everybody just come and take a CD please and take it home and listen to it all year until next Christmas okay, so. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, everybody.
Please give everybody a hand. You want to come on stage and take a bow? One more bow. Okay.